Hey everybody, Jason here. I hope you're all doing really well. Today, we're gonna to be having a look at an iPhone 6S PCB that was sent here for no backlight. As you can see, this PCB is actually in really good condition. I'll be honest, I'll be very surprised if I wind up with one that that's gonna have just like a, a filter failure or, or something like that. I just, I don't hardly ever see those anymore. So let's, uh, is it in focus? Hang on. Yeah, so as you can see, this thing's not all beat up. Uh, the stickers are a little bit crunched here or there, but um, it's probably had a bit of a bumpy ride on the way here. Oh, geez, I'm having a... There we go. And if you're wondering why I'm not wearing blue gloves today, that is because... I am out of blue gloves today. Sort of snuck up on me. Let's get that aside. So let's go ahead and... So let's go ahead and have a look at this thing under the microscope. Now the quickest way... What the hell? Now, to, the quickest way to diagnose a bad backlight on an iPhone 6S or just about any iPhone is to look at it with your eyeballs. And on the iPhone 6S, if it's going to be like technician damage out of the connector, uh, you will wind up, see if I can find me a pointing tool here, you will wind up with visible burnt like damage here. You'll see like solder balls squeezing out. Um, FL4211 is right here, and that is where our backlight filter is, and I don't visibly see anything wrong. Let's see what the meter can tell us. Let's put the meter on the screen. Come on, Mofo. Put the, are you, okay, it puts the meter on the screen. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check the pin that is uh, our backlight anode. This is where we're going to decide... Is this a open circuit? Do we have a short? You know, what is it exactly that we're getting into here? So I'm going to put the meter in diode mode, and then I'm going to put my red probe on a ground anywhere. Any ground will do. And then we're going to put our black, pl black probe on our backlight anode. And we are getting, oh, let's see, 0.44. That doesn't seem too bad. Is 0.44 a normal reading? Let's check our cathodes, 0.56. So I'm not coming up with anything that is just like absolutely open. So if we don't know what the normal diode mode reading is supposed to be, what we can do is we can check on a known good board. This is a semi-known good iPhone 6S. You can thank the customer who never paid their return shipping bill for this measurement. We are going to put our red probe on ground, and we're gonna put our black probe on backlight anode. And we're getting a 0.44. We're getting the exact same reading. So we know that we're getting a good reading on the backlight anode, which we can pretty well safely assume that the filter is not blown. And if you want to be absolutely sure, I mean, we can get in here, we can carve this out just a little bit, just pick, pick at the top of this coating, watch me slip and like stab a hole through something. Okay, so as you can see there, we have just exposed FL4211. So with FL4211's bare nakedness hanging out, we're gonna set our meter to ohms mode. Here we are in ohms mode. And we're gonna put one probe on one side of it and the other probe on the other side of it and we should get something around, oh, zero ohms. 0 0.8 ohms. That means that we've got something fishy going on here. Let's verify that this sucker boots, shall we? That is something that I have not done. I pulled the board out, 
and I automatically assumed that this is booting without backlight. Is it, uh, hmm. Well, we're getting good anode reading. It, it could be the driver or possibly one of the coils or diodes. Let's see here. What if, uh, let's just, for, let's just pretend that this phone might have been booting without image rather than without backlight. So here we're looking at the iPhone 6S connector, and as you know, in order to get image, we need PP1V8 LCM com to be present. So we just click on up through here, and I'm looking for PP1V8 LCM con. okay? That is one, two, three, four up on the left-hand side of that connector, the way that we're looking at it. So let's see what sort of a diode mode reading we are getting there. You know, instead of plugging the board in and testing it, I'm, I'm looking for no image problem without actually plugging it in. So what did I say, four? So let's check out one, two, three, four. 2K, that don't seem bad, but I meant to be on diode mode. So let's do that one more time. Get the old hairy probe in here. Look, look, at, how, look at how hairy my probe is. Oh, you can't see it. All right, time to goof off. Uh-huh. That is a hairy probe. Okay, back to this repair. So we're putting our red probe on ground, and we're going to put our black probe on a PP1V8LCM con, and we're getting one, two, three, four. We're getting a 0.27. I'm going to call that a normal reading. I've got a sneaky feeling we're going to have some carnage going on under that uh, CPU shield there. Dang it, I was not planning on doing a rebuild for this video, but I, I, you know, I know better. Well, let's just peck around on these. We're getting a 0 .41, 44, 28, that's reverse bias, 0.59. There is not going to be a lick of anything wrong with the backlight filter. There's not going to be anything wrong with anything at all. This is um, this this is the direct result of me getting my repairs filtered. I don't get to see backlight filters anymore. Well, before we get too crazily dug into this, let's go ahead and verify the problem. I'm going to just, for ease of power button pressage, I'm going to drop that in a housing. And we're going to hook our power baton up right there. We are going to go ahead and connect the best screen in the entire shop. There we go. We're going to put the power supply on the screen and we are going to connect some power. There we go. Now let's go ahead and turn the supply on. Watching the amperage very carefully, let's verify our voltage and not accidentally hook 12 volts to a board today. Okay, this board is drawing zero amps. That is a good sign. Now we're gonna go ahead and press the power button to turn it on. And one, two, three, 100 milliamps, 140, it is booting and I can see a faint Apple logo. So this is absolutely a no backlight phone. It is also absolutely going to be very likely something going on under the CPU shield. So let's go ahead, take the board out of it. And I'm going to go ahead and add some alcohol to these sticker pad things here because 
Uh, they're going to get severely destroyed whenever we heat this up to remove the shield. Now this is going to be what I would consider to be a backlight system repair and not just like a backlight repair. Now we've recently published a repair list for other repair shops. Many of you have been asking me about it and uh, we have just been really, really swamped and now I'm not really swamped. I've been turning away a lot of bull and it's amounted to much, many more fixable phones. Uh, but fewer repairs overall coming in. So turnaround time is down and life is looking much better. All right, so we're gonna peel this off here. And we're gonna remove the shield. Let's try to do it without burning my camera this time. Okay, so I've got my hot air set. Uh, you know what? I can't even tell you what it's set on because I never calibrated this station. I've got this quick set to 430C, and I usually use an airflow of 40. We're going to start heating this up. It's going to be a little bit difficult to do here. Let's see. Okay, let's just do it. I'm sorry if I missed the majority of this. Well, I don't smell anything burning yet. Many times by this point in the repair on an iPhone 6S that has had a hard short on backlight output, when you start heating up that shield, you smell it by golly. All right, we've got the shield off. Without wasting any more time here, let's have a look at it under the microscope. <clears throat> <clears throat> this, this really doesn't look bad at Oh, I don't think we've had any shorts. Uh, the dang backlight just quit working, right? So is it going to be a diode? Or is it going to be the driver? I'm going to say this is most likely the driver. I mean, it could be the diodes. Um, see, when, when the backlight circuit on an iPhone 6S has been shorted, if you search through my videos, I don't have good playlists, but if you like, I think there's a search box, and if you type like 6S or anything, it'll show you all my 6S videos. Oh, hey, here it is. Huh. Is that an easy one or what? I'm getting ready to do a, a system rebuild, and we've got a wonky coil. We'll put some music behind this in my video and be like, do, 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 ja, do, 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 ja. make, the, make the coil dance. Oh, look at this. It's going to fall off. Hey, guys, we've got a self-removing backlight coil. I don't even need any tools. I wasted all my money buying like soldering equipment and stuff. And this phone's gonna walk just waltz in here and fix itself. Let's let's see if it'll solder a new coil on here for me. You think it will? I don't think I'm gonna get that lucky. I've already gotten dang lucky and the problem pretty well just reached out and smacked me in the face. What do you think about that for luck? Okay, so uh, we're gonna put a coil on this one and it's most likely going to fix it. Stop jabbering so people don't gripe at me. We're talking and just do your job. Show me how to do this stuff for free, you greedy bastard. How dare you spend time talking about yourself. All right, so let's put this in a board holder. There we are. Love my board, ho board holder. It's got places for like, you know, the iPhone 10 board. It's got, it's got good, good things all over it. And we like good things. All right, so we're going to just clip that in there right like that. There we are. And we're going to get this right back squat under the microscope. Okay, now to do this, I'm going to use the hot air in my left hand, and I'm going to be using a soldering iron in my right hand. I'm going to add just a baby bit of flux to this. And then um, I'm dipping my uh, FM2032 micro pencil with the 0.1 millimeter conical tip that's probably worn down to like 2.5 millimeters or something. I'm dipping that in 6337 leaded solder paste. And as I warm the board up, I'm going to take a little blab of solder here and swipe that garbage right off the board because that's the 
crap that belonged to our old coil. Now we're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing to the other side. Now I'm trying not to like just blast the CPU with hot air because you know they don't. I don't want to pop solder balls and stuff. And now that we have gotten those off the board, I'm going to add a bit more flux. We're going to fluff this up with leaded solder. Why do I always make them too dang tall? If you make these pads too tall, the uh, coils that I use will wind up resting on the shield. And that, that would be bad, okay? There we go. That, that, that's probably pretty good. So with the board still fairly hot, I'm going to take a nickel and lay it right there on top of that, all that snotty CPU paste. Add a bit more flux. And now we're going to drop one of these coils on the board. These coils I buy from DigiKey. I did a video on how to source uh, components for board repair. It will show you everything, most everything, except for um, how to find these coils. I think. I don't think I included the, the coils in that video. And for the coils, I wound up actually physic like not only going by like the, the micro Henry's and um, the specs, I actually had to physically measure the coil with a ruler under the microscope to get the right dimensions. Um, I might come back and revisit that, that video one day whenever, um, whenever I can spend more time on YouTube. Almost. All right, so we're just about up to temp. I'm going to heat this one other pad here. Are we in focus? Nothing like being out of focus for the end of the porn, right? There we go. Oh, baby. Yeah, it's kind of off to the side a little bit. I should sit here and torture this phone and straighten out that coil a little bit. No, I'm kidding. I just, I don't want it over here by ground. It was too close to ground for comfort. All right, so that's on there pretty good. Flatten it down once more. I don't know why I use too much solder on these. My my worry here is it being, I, I try to keep it below the CPU. So we're, and I think it's a little bit, it's a little bit high up. I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it down a little bit and let it solidify. There we go. I'm going to pull some of the solder away from here. I'm going to use an iron. Flux, heat. Now, I've not actually got it hot enough to melt lead-free solder. Okay, now we're getting rid of some of this. So I'm not worried about floating anything under the CPU yet. You know what? We are just going to call this good. Make sure it floats on there nice and pretty, and then we're going to quit. I've already heated that up like three too many times. Beautiful. All right, I can live with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean this up with a Q-tip. Yeah, I totally get it. Like, I I don't receive any backlight filters. You know, if it's like, you know, a straight VCC main short or really straightforward repair, that's that's stuff that I just do not hardly ever receive anymore. I receive stuff that needs like full-blown, you know, backlight circuits that are shorted and need major rework because they're welded to the boards. And um, I get that kind of stuff. But I totally get it. Who, who, who wouldn't? So... Um, I've been putting some effort into our price list, and I've been trying to um, offer more simple repairs for more simple rates. You know, sort of kind of backing away from this solutions-based billing. Um, so we have published a, a price list for other shops, and I'm going to be refining that and other adding other services and things to it. 
Um, there has been a lot of you that have asked me about uh, special pricing for repair shops, and it's just, you know, we were charging on average, you know, probably twenty to fifty dollars less for any given repair that was on the menu, but I didn't actually have a um, list published. So if you go to www.stetle.com/shops, that is our price list for repair shops. Feel free to. Um, if there's something that's not listed or if you have questions about pricing, feel free to uh, submit a ticket or send an email to office at ststele.com and we'll be we'll do our best to respond to everybody. Once in a while we miss people that email because we get a ton of emails. All right, so that's looking pretty good. It's cleaned up. It's soldered on. Let's see if it gets backlight. Let's kick this aside. There we go. I've uh, also, you know, I haven't posted a video in a while, so I got a lot to say. Um, I've switched my cameras around and I put the camera that used to be pointed at me, I put it on my hands because it's, whoops, it's considerably better quality. And I put the camera that used to be on my hands, hi everybody, I put it right here on me. And that is an effort to make, hopefully, make better quality repair videos. I got to buy another camera. Nobody cares about recording gear. This is a repair tech channel. Hundreds of repair questions and like dozens of how do you record the video questions. Why is this so dark? What did I do? Ugh. All right, so let's get a screen hooked up. There we are. And let's go ahead and hook up our power supply. And for this demonstration, we are gonna need the power supply on the screen. It puts the power supply on the screen. There we go, we've got the power supply on and we are going to press the button to boot using the best test, test screen assembly and the shop. And one, two, three, 130 milliamps. Is it going to smoke and fire? No, it's going to light back up, backlight, because this phone had a very, very, very simple problem. I like the ones where you just open it up and you're like, hey, look, and then you can just fix it. So we're going to let this thing boot up. Now, Dun, 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 dun. Any minute, switch back over to me. God, I look like look like crap. You can tell I've been sitting here soldering for like three days, and now that it's summer in Florida, like it's it's pretty wet and, and humid and stuff. All right, so we're here. We go. We are up to a lock screen. I could show you that. There we go. We have image. We have touch. We have a shattered backlight coil and this is going to be due to um, flexing or, or impact you know that didn't just like pop apart um, let's see this thing is like really really suffering for light you know that's that isn't something that just fell apart um, that's something that this it took a pretty big impact or a bend and let's be sure and yank it all apart before disconnecting power and if you will remember on the back side of this board we had you know, a, a lot of crinkling in the stickers here. It has the look of a board that, focus please. It has the look of a board that came out of a housing that just looks like hell. You know, it's, it took a pretty good slap. So now we're gonna go ahead and put the shield back on it. Very easy repair. Now, if this was like a full backlight system rebuild, I wind up like completely globbing UV mask all over that crap after it's done. Uh, because, you know, it's covered in underfill and oh, heck, I don't know. I just, I like to do it because it makes it look kind of pretty. But all we did on this one was replace the coil. There we go.
Let's keep heating this up, very, trying very hard not to burn my camera. My favorite camera at the moment. All right, I'm gonna heat this up here right until I can see like the solder start to give when I push on it. There it goes, and I'm gonna hold it down, let it cool. I'm not doing a very good job here, okay. There we go. So that is looking pretty good. I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead where I'm going to drop this back in a housing one more time. I'm sure it'll be okay, but I just want to make sure it continues to get backlight. So I'm going to let that cool off here for just one second. Um, let's get a screen hooked to it. Where in the heck is my beloved test screen? There it is. We're going to hook up my beloved test screen. And we are going to connect some power. Still a little bit warm. And we're going to press the power button in one, two, three. Just kidding. Boot. All right, so this thing's gonna be fine. So that is gonna be the end of this video, folks. I do thank you all for watching. And um, for those of you that have been watching this channel for a long time, I do have to say that in the coming months, in order for me to be able to continue posting videos, um, I have to change it up some. I'm going to be changing the... I'm going to be changing the repair format, uh, the, the format of the overall repair videos some, but I think in the long run, everybody is going to wind up um, with a much, much better video, and it's going to keep me going for longer. So um, if you all will bear with me as uh, these videos kind of gradually shift maybe one way or the other, um, I will do my best to continue um, producing content that you all subscribed for. Um, but at the same time, um, if I'm not able to uh, change the direction of my videos and sort of start recording differently as I am now, it's I'm going to wind up burning out and I'll wind up posting the video every month, couple months, and you know, I'm, I'm going to fizzle. So um, I'm excited to start recording differently and um, I just want to thank you all for sticking with me. And uh, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. I will try not to ramble so long in, in, in most of my videos. So uh, guys, that's it for now. Happy customer, um, happy repair shop customer. This is a repair shop. This is a repair shop that does not yet know about our reduced rates for repair shops. So they are actually going to be getting a lesser bill than what they were expecting. And that makes me feel good. So I'll see you next time, everybody. Have a good day. Thanks for watching.